Hello and welcome to the Zixi Zen Master demonstration. My name is Natron Dionarain and I'm a solutions engineer here at Zixi. With that said, a little bit about Zixi. We started about 14 years ago as a protocol company and about three years ago, we evolved into the software defined video platform. Currently being used by top broadcasters, OTT platforms and service providers to source manage and distribute live events and their live linear channels. There, our customers are leveraging any IP network, any protocol, any cloud provider, and any edge device to move their video uh, from point to point, leveraging the Zixi platform. So what are the four components to the software defined video platform? First and foremost is the protocols. We at Zixi believe the Zixi protocol is the best. However, we realize there's additional use cases for additional protocols. So we support 16 additional protocols. Secondly is the video solution stack. The things we've built around the protocols, uh, things like hitless failover, time shifting, the ability to do, to do RCA in a browser uh, instead of you know, resetting up a workflow. Thirdly is the Zixi ecosystem. We have over 200 plus partners that has integrated Zixi into their platforms, whether it's an encoder or decoder or transcoder or some kind of application that processes video. Fourth and finally is our Zixi Zen Master application for which we'll be doing a demo today. Zen Master allows you to manage your ecosystem all from within the browser. You can spin up streams, spin down streams, uh, transcode, set it all up uh, within the browser from anywhere in the world. Next, let's take a look at how Zixi is typically deployed. Uh, we create three pieces of software, the Zixi feeder, the Zixi broadcaster, and the Zixi receiver. These applications are the logical components that are used to essentially send video from one point to another. The Zixi feeder and the broadcaster work in conjunction for contribution use cases, and the Zixi broadcaster and the receiver uh, will work in conjunction to do distribution use cases. Uh, we saw the value in this, in this platform and we essentially uh, incorporated the ability to manage additional protocols such as RIST, SRT, NDI, and recently we added the support for WebRTC to do monitoring uh, in a low latency um, remote work environment. In addition to uh, contribution and distribution, our broadcaster is capable of transcoding. It's a very fast transcoder. It does about, it takes about 200 milliseconds to transcode into HLS, DASH, and CMAP. As you can see here, most of the lines are going directly, directly through the applications, um, and green lines are going into Zen Master. Zen Master is a control plane that allows you to collect the analytics, uh, set up streams, tear down streams, uh, set up uh, transcoding profiles, all the things you need to do to manage your Zixi ecosystem. With that said, let's jump into a quick demo of Zen Master. The first, screen you, the first dashboard you'll see when logging into Zen Master is the overall dashboard that shows you the, the status of your system. So you'll be able to see uh, your feeders, broadcasters, receivers, the logical components, if they're green or red or disabled. And then next you'll have your sources, channels, and targets. Sources are inputs, channels are um, a source going to a destination, and those destinations are targets. And finally, we have a remote das access dashboard that gives you access to those edge devices, the encoders and decoders. You have access to their UI to manage those devices all from within uh, the Zen Master platform. Next, uh, we have the grids dashboard. Um, I'll click on the source thumbnails, and this is your typical knock view where you can look at the thumbnails, uh, you can have uh, the view meters uptime, and if there are any errors, they will appear on the screen. Um, if you did have an error in one of these streams, you can actually click on the links here and go right into those um, uh, streams and start troubleshooting the issue. We'll skip over, in the interest of time, we'll skip over feeders and receivers today. Uh, jump, we'll talk a little bit about broadcasters. Broadcasters can run on-prem, um, they can run in AWS. So within the Zen Master Platform, we have a native integration with AWS, Azure, and Google uh, Cloud. You can essentially you know, jump into one of these uh, clusters and spin up a new broadcaster at any time. So clicking on this button here uh, goes into my AWS account, spins up a virtual machine, um, installs the, soft, the broadcaster software, and makes it part of this cluster. Now instantly I can have expanded my um, throughput for this cluster and I can add more video streams. Jumping into the sources, 
So think of sources as all the content coming into the system. Uh, if, we, if we look at a source very quickly here, um, as you can see, uh, there's a notification here telling me there's something wrong with this source. Uh, I can see that there's a thumbnail of the source. Um, I can look at the metadata for the uh, study, the audio, or the video PID. Uh, and then there's a few more details on the left-hand side showing you, you know, where the source is coming from, uptime, bit rate, all of that stuff. Uh, looking at the content analysis of this source, we, uh, we help you to be proactive in troubleshooting issues. So if we were ever to see frozen video, blank picture, sign audio, or audio clipping, um, we will send an alert over to your NOC or someone that needs to know about this and they'd be able to go and troubleshoot the issue. In addition to monitoring for content analysis, we also have the TR101 Priority 1 and Priority 2 analytics. As you can see, we have a PCR accuracy error and we're showing the last time we had an error. If you didn't need to go troubleshoot further, you can click on the history tab and this will open uh, a number of charts that allows you to uh, go back into time and troubleshoot issues. So you no longer are spinning up uh, or troubleshooting issues by recreating or reproducing an issue. You can actually go back into the data and look and see how something performed. So let's say I had something you know, in this specific time period here. I can select that section on the chart and all my charts below will reload to that time frame. We'll come back to the study chart uh, and talk about that a little bit later. Um, but let's say we did have an issue. Uh, as you can see here, you know, there are no issues. The protocol is doing what it's expected to do and it's recovering packets. So as long as it's recovering packets, we're delivering a perfect stream. If we were to drop some packets, we can, you know, we can see it here and then we can go down and look at the next chart at the bitrate chart and see exactly how that affected the bitrate of a specific PID. I'll open a couple more charts and go through those. Um, so if we did have something that affected a specific PID, uh, we can go into the frame delivery uh, of that, that, uh, that PID and see how much it was impacted. So if we had a couple of packets dropped and it was the video PID, we can see that you know, we didn't de deliver 100% of that video PID. Furthermore, we can actually uh, provide perceptual information. So this is our estimated PSNR chart. Um, we did a study on H.264 encoders. Uh, and from that study, we gathered the data, create an algorithm, and we apply that to the bitstream. And without seeing the actual uncompressed video, we can give you an estimated PSNR score of within 1% of the actual PSNR score. So the higher the reds on this chart, the better quality of encoding you're getting from that encoder. Uh, if you are getting lower reds, that means you will be susceptible to macro blocking or possible frame dropouts. Now getting back to that SCSI, uh, those SCSI alerts that we saw earlier, if we click on the SCSI uh, dashboard, you'll be able to see the uh, SCSI messages coming in on that stream. As you can see, these are all out of network and there's no in network, and that's why we have an error, because we, we never saw the into network uh, SCSI message come in. So essentially we're alerting the user that we didn't see an into network, which means you may be sending black to air or not sending anything at all. Uh, we can actually see the um, additional payload, or we can actually see the payload of the SCSI marker by clicking on the details button, and you can see the JSON here and troubleshoot further. Jumping into channels, uh, adding a channel is very easy. Uh, you basically click on the plus button here, um, and it gives you a choice to add from a number of different uh, channels. So essentially, uh, let's say you wanted to do a transcode channel or just a pass-through channel, those are all options you have. So as you can see, there's transcode into HLS-CMAF, or you can do a pass-through of RTMP, uh, RIS, SRT. Um, and in addition to that, you can also spin up Media Connect workflows right from within our Zen Master platform. Taking a look at uh, an OTT transcode channel, here we have an OTT transcode channel. The one uh, cool thing about um, our, our platform is it gives you a lot of detail. So we can actually play the HLS right here in the browser, or I can, I can play it in VLC, or if I wanted to, I can actually play it right uh, down to the specific bit rate. So I can troubleshoot the bit rate level of the HLS uh, renditions. Uh, our transcoder also collects data. So we collect data from the transcoder so we can show you uh, you know, if there were any source frame dropouts, uh, transcoder resets. Uh, so you can get very detailed in your troubleshooting. 
In addition to uh, you know showing you the details there, we also have a nice diagram of the workflow. So you can see uh, videos coming into um, a feeder. It's called from Cheddar. Uh, it's being sent to a cloud data center, and from there we're sending into Azure Transcode virtual machine that has GPUs, uh, where we're taking advantage of those GPUs uh, and transcoding into HLS at uh, four different renditions, and that those renditions are being dropped off into. Uh, HLS uh, target on S3. If we take a look at the, that target, um, you can see this is being sent there and I can play that right from here. So in it, before when I could have played the specific bit rate um, uh, from the encoder itself, now I can actually play this right from the origin. So at every step of the way, I can troubleshoot uh, the video. We're also tracking the SCSI markers at every rendition. So if you wanted to see the SCSI markers being delivered into each rendition, you can come into this dashboard uh, and see exactly that information. Taking a look at another type of uh, uh, channel, we have here a broadcast channel that's doing a contribution uh, with Hitless. So going through this uh, diagram, you can see here we have a feeder that's feeding uh, two sources, ideally across two different ISPs to increase resiliency and redundancy. Um, those two streams are being pulled by a broadcaster. That broadcaster is stitching those streams together, picking a packet from either stream if it missed, if it missed a packet from a specific stream, um, then stitching that together, sending it downstream. And as you can see here, we're distributing it to Media Connect, uh, wrist, SRT, and Zixi pull. So this helps you to see, show the interoperability of different uh, protocols within the platform. Next, uh, let's take a look at a few targets and the uh, analytics we collect from those endpoints. Our targets consist of either uh, HLS, um, SRT endpoints, wrist, and we collect a number of details on each of those endpoints. So if I were to click on this wrist uh, target here, I can see from the history that we have a number of details, um, you know, on you know unrecovered packets. Uh, very similar to RIST, we have the exact same details. So you're able to show that you know um, you're delivering to those endpoints. Uh, and if we had a Zixi endpoint, um, we have a some some more rich details on the Zixi endpoints, such as you know, down to not recovered packets at the at a number level. So you can see packets that specifically were not delivered. Or if you're delivering a number of PIDs, you can see that information here as well. Finally, I will talk a little bit about the remote access dashboard. Um, so remote access dashboard gives you the ability to uh, manage those edge devices, whether it's an encoder or a decoder. Um, as you can see here, most of these are running uh, in our headquarters at the 199 address. Um, and if I wanted to manage those remotely, I can click on the open button here. And that essentially will open that encoder's full UI. I can now manage my edge device. I can spin up streams, spin down streams, um, and you know troubleshoot anything I have there. So that's a very quick overview of the Zixi platform. The last thing I'll show is our recent uh, integration with uh, the TAG uh, VS monitoring solution. Um, so the TAG system essentially creates uh, a matrix that you would typically have in a NOC. And with all the remote work that's happening recently, if you have a, a TAG system and you have the Zixi integration, you can basically send all your streams into TAG, create that matrix, and then with Zixi, you're able to send that stream to someone to monitor. So if you have a knock that's following the sun, you can send them you know, a, a bunch of video screens for them to monitor. Uh, or they can monitor it from home via WebRTC. So clicking on this WebRTC link, uh, this will open a new page that has that matrix uh, coming from TAG. And now I can open that and monitor this at home as if I was actually in a knock, uh, and it looks very real time, even though that may not be coming across on the stream. So that's the that's it for the Zixi quick Zen Master overview. If you have any more questions or if you wanted to contact Zixi, feel free to reach out to us. Reach out to us at info@zixi.com. Thank you for your time.